When a disaster happens, we depend on first responders and government agencies for help. But also important are the many volunteer organizations that are here before, during, and after an emergency. I have Sabit Abbasi with DuPage County Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Management, and Dave Roth with the Northeastern Illinois Community Organizations Active in a Disaster. Quite a mouthful. Yes. Um, to tell us about how volunteers help out with um, other government agencies. Thanks for being here. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. Okay, can we cut it down to the acronym, which, which would be COAD, correct? Sure, COAD. Okay, and can you tell me about what does COAD do? Sure. It might be best if I describe COAD by talking a little bit about the very quick history. We're a part of a national movement of voluntary organizations working together in disaster that's probably 45 years old, and it starts in the national level. Uh, where the larger response organizations, Red Cross, Salvation Army, um, the um, Southern Baptists are among seven groups that about 45 years ago were responding to a disaster, uh, to a hurricane in Florida, and they noticed as they were responding to survivors that those survivors were having to go across town to seven different places looking for help, and they said, this is crazy. We need to work together. We need to make this easier for those folks we're trying to help that will help the recovery. So they started a national organization called VOAD, Voluntary Organizations Active in Disaster. And the VOAD movement has made its way across the United States into statewide associations and ultimately to the kind of association that we are in this metropolitan area, a regional organization. And the uh, clear need there is we know that disaster recovery work is best done in a local context. Our relationship with Sabat and DuPage County is essential. That's where the best planning for recovery will be. So community organizations active in disaster is a kind of a child of voluntary organizations active in disaster. So would you say that you kind of fill in the needs mm -hmm. where government agencies um, cannot provide everything after a disaster? That's very true. And um, that's a very flexible and ever-changing way that we fill in those gaps. Uh, I think 45 years ago it was the public side doing its work and then handing it over to the uh, nonprofit side, but today this is totally integrated and um, um, in this 45 year period we've seen enormous changes and uh, in the last 10 years with our recession and with the cutback in government funding the need for collaboration so that we're the most effective together has been essential. First, volunteer organizations among themselves, and then in our partnership with public entities. Volunteers now are carrying so much more of the weight uh, than they did 45 years ago or 20 years ago. And Sabah, would you say your organization is, um, not depending on, but working together with these organizations very closely? Absolutely. What comes to my mind is synergy, the concept of synergy. You know, together as a whole, we can multiply um, the work that we're doing and efforts. And as Dave mentioned, the volunteers, nowadays with volunteers having to go through rigorous training, they're much more valuable and provide subject matter expertise and skills that they may not have brought in you know, 45 years ago. So we have established programs that volunteers can go through and get trained and certified and then um, work together with all the other organizations and with us. So when there is a disaster, we can call in on the volunteers and we know that they are trained, uh, they're credentialed, and we can, we can, uh, we can uh, re basically rely on them. Now can you kind of explain, there's so many different organizations um, most people know about the Red Cross. If there's a big disaster, maybe they'll give money to the Red Cross or try to get involved in that way. How do you coordinate all of these efforts? So one, one way is we coordinate is uh, by working with COAD. COAD brings in all of those organizations together. So uh, we all you know, attend regular meetings, go through training classes together, uh, communicate, and identify what each organization brings to the table and where we need to supplement or need to provide additional training. So, um, you know, that, that's one way we work with some of the larger organizations. So you, uh, you mentioned Red Cross. Red Cross is at the forefront, you know, with tremendous years of experience uh, leading volunteers and bringing them together. So we rely on their subject matter expertise on how they bring in all the volunteers, how they manage them. Um, there could be spontaneous volunteers, there could be you know, donations that are provided. How 
how is all of that managed? So we rely on these agencies that have years of experience doing that work uh, to help you know to help us, and then we work with them to help them. For the co-ed, we've decided in this area when we kind of reformulated ourselves three years ago. Our members said, most important, we want this co-ed to ensure that there are pre-established relationships among the agencies before disaster strikes. Mm -hmm. And so we've established a meeting every other month where the co-ed gathers face-to-face -face primarily, but we also will teleconference folks in. So we use those meetings as a place to make sure we're building relationships with each other, an understanding of what the other can do. And we also use that time for training. We'll feature folks who will come in and share with us information about what's relevant, what's going on now. We were very pleased. DuPage County provided public health information about the Zika virus to our members at the last um, membership meeting. That's crucial because our members will go out to their networks and carry those public information messages. Um, you mentioned the membership and the diversity, and I wanted to pay a little bit of attention to that. You mentioned the well-known characters which we value so much. There are also <clears throat> numerous faith-based initiatives, um, and those include Christian, Jewish, Muslim, and other faith groups, Buddhist. Uh, our membership is quite broad and diverse, and one of the beauties of a co-ed is that we don't require um, a religious statement or belief statement to come into the room. Everybody comes into the room respecting what the others bring to the table. So there are those groups, the faith-based groups. There are civic groups that come and join us. The motivation is to build a better and stronger community. There are service organizations. I'm thinking of the animal-assisted therapy groups, Rainbow okay. and Hope. Um, there are child care groups that come and provide a specialized help um, during a, the immediate period after a disaster when adults are needing to take care of business. Well, here are credentialed folks who will care for their children in a service center with an eyesight in the room, uh, but free the parents to do their work uh, regarding insurance and other benefits. That's fantastic. So it sounds like a lot of different specialties, just a lot of people who want to help coming together. Right. Great. Um, can you give me kind of, uh, do you have any examples of how you've really put this into practice? It sounds like you do a lot of preparation to be ready. Have you had to use the co-ed? We have. So we're, in a reconstituted way, we're relatively new. It's three years. And we came together in 2013, just about a month or two before the flooding of 2013. And DuPage County was seriously affected, as was all of northern Illinois. And uh, so in this community, um, the Red Cross, of course, immediately went to work setting up emergency shelter. Mm -hmm. uh, churches provided emergency shelter. I'm thinking of Trinity Lutheran Church. Um, there were emergency response teams that went to do cleanup work in communities, mm -hmm. and uh, that would be Southern Baptist and Lutheran and Methodist groups, and I'm probably leaving some out. Um, once the emergency response was complete, a long-term recovery team was put together, and that also then incorporated the Adventists and the Presbyterians, and um, I hope your audience will forgive me, I'm going to forget some of the groups. Everybody is at the table. And that group took the responsibility of making sure that those who couldn't bounce back right away were outreached to, developed a relationship with a case manager, identified what could be done, um, home repairs, appliance replacements were done, and that effort continued and came to an official close about a year ago. So you can imagine it was about a two-year time frame from start to finish. And uh, because that event was broader than DuPage County, there were parts of Cook that were more um, deeply damaged, and some recovery work is continuing there, although we've pretty much completed it in DuPage. Mm -hmm. and then to, you know, to bring it back home to Wheaton, uh, Rock Cross and I believe uh, Church World Service was able to donate uh, over 1,500 cleanup kits that um, we at the county coordinated in distributing them to the local municipalities. And that basically went directly to the residents who, at the time, didn't have their emergency kit put together, um, could have used you know, things such as bleach, mop, and cleaning supplies. So they were phenomenal in being able to quickly provide them those resources so that they can quickly uh, clean up and get back uh, to, to their lives. Um, and then again, you know, when FEMA came in and we received a presidentially declared disaster, 
FEMA provided assistance, but there were still several residents that uh, had unmet needs. And this long-term recovery committee was a tremendous help where uh, they set up a call center and folks that still needed assistance would call into this uh, call center and request for assistance. And the different agencies that are part of the COAD uh, raised their hands and said, we could help with this. And everybody worked together. So that was uh, really beautiful to see how everyone comes together in time of an emergency and we get through this. So one of the things that's great about Wheaton is there are a lot of people who want to help, a lot of nonprofit organizations and other community groups. If people want to get involved with COAD or something else, um, is COAD open for new members? Most definitely. Our meetings are public. Our invitation to membership is broad. So one of the things I would like to leave your audience with today is if they're affiliated with an organization that has an interest in helping in disaster, please contact us and uh, they can write us at our email address, which is n-e-i-c-o-a-d at gmail.com. That's Northeast Illinois Coed at gmail.com. Let us know of their interest. We'll invite them to a meeting, and we'll have a sit down a face-to-face to say welcome. Um, what are the things that you see yourself contributing, and how can we get you involved? Great, and how about individual Sabbath? Are there, um, where would you suggest that they go? So there are, so, there are several opportunities that are available. Um, one is, uh, that comes to my mind is the Citizen Corps Council. It's an umbrella branch. Uh, it's a nationwide initiative. And uh, so residents who are interested in volunteering can take a look at the Citizen Corps Council in their area. So if they go to our website at protectdupage.org, there's a link there. They could type in their zip code and find out, uh, uh, find out about a local Citizen Corps Council in that area. Now, a Citizen Corps Council uh, is comprised of what, uh, what's called CERT, Community Emergency Response Team, uh, Medical Reserve Corps, Volunteers and Police Service, or VIPs, and Fire Corps. So depending on their interests, they can look into getting involved with the specific agency. Um, so just to kind of give a, a highlight of each of those organizations, so Community Emergency Response Team, CERT, uh, their primary purpose is to share, uh, train the individuals and their families and their neighborhoods. So. I've gone through that training, and uh, the idea is for me to be trained in my home, make sure my family's trained, and I have the basic skills, such as uh, how to put out a fire. You know, they actually show you using a fire extinguisher. Many people have never used a fire extinguisher, so you go through this training learning how to use a fire extinguisher. You learn uh, basic first aid in medical. So if someone's broken their arm or if someone's bleeding profusely, how do you stop that bleeding? Because as you are aware, in disasters, sometimes the first responders and the medical, uh, you know, the ambulances, they may not get to you right away. So these are some great skills to learn in just everyday life. You know, if you're having a, uh, a family gathering, someone is having a heart attack, you learn some of those skills, uh, some of those symptoms so that you can identify and proactively take the measures ahead of time. So that's the idea of CERT and they have organized teams in DuPage County that if, some, if a disaster happens, then these volunteers can step up and help out. Uh, we also have the DuPage County Medical Reserve Corps. Uh, now I know it says medical, but folks that are interested in uh, anything related to medical, they can join in. They don't necessarily have to have a medical background. Um, if you have an interest in providing assistance uh, in times of public health crisis, or even outside of that, uh, we have established a medical reserve corps. So folks can come in, they'll receive all the training that's needed, and they can bring in their subject matter expertise, their skills, and we can put them in different areas. So one of the areas could be doing community outreach work, going out and talking to the different residents and explaining to them how they could get, be prepared. The other could be our emergency operations center. When we activate that, our emergency operating center, we can call in these volunteers to come and assist us. Um, so there are a number of opportunities. And uh, again, volunteers in police service, folks that are interested in, in you know police work, they could help out the police departments. Uh, and then the same thing with the fire department, they could help out the fire department, and they'll provide the training. Uh, you know, and I, I believe all of the training that they provide is free of charge. You know, you go through that training, you get some equipment, and you learn those skills. And then, you know, if later on, if you do join COAD or another organization, you've got those basic skills under your belt. Um, so, and then I'll just throw this out there also, but, you know, folks, you know, myself personally, I've gone through this training as a CERD and others. Um, it helped me with my career development. You know, I learned a lot of transferable skills. 
uh, going through their training. So folks that are you know young, they want to uh, start building their resume and just wanting to get involved in the community can learn so many skills that are transferable across the board. Um, so uh, again, our website is protectyourpage.org and they could go on there to look at all the different opportunities in, in this area. Great. Well, I think it's great to know that these organizations are working before a disaster happens. So if something does happen, um, mm -hmm. everyone is ready and connected already. So I really appreciate both of you being here and sharing how people can get involved. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dave Roth, and I'm chair of Northeast Illinois Community Organizations Active in Disaster, NEI COAD. When there is a disaster in your community, voluntary organizations work together with government to make sure that there is a good emergency response, short-term response, and long-term recovery so that the community can heal. If you'd like to find out how your organization can be involved with us in this work in a collaborative effort, please write us at n-e-i-c-o-a-d at gmail.com. Thank you.